Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks War Gaming, and this is the first in a new series of uh, videos where I'm going to be taking you through sort of the progress of my um, Iron Hands Force. So um, those of you that have been watching the channel for a while will know that I've already got a um, Iron Hands Horus Heresy Force. Um, however, with the new edition. Um, I wanted to sort of change uh, the composition of that force um, because I, although it worked in the old edition, I don't feel like it it, it will work as well in this new edition. Uh, plus, I just wanted um, wanted to do something. You know, the new edition has really got me sort of the buzz back to actually um, start doing sort of heresy models. Um, I'd collected an awful lot of stuff and it had gone in my pile of shame and uh, I'm going to be trying to work through that now. So each one of these videos will be showing you sort of new units that I'm adding, anything from, uh, as you see in front of you, a couple of um, squads of uh, tactical marines uh, through to HQs and as the new models are released, I plan to get some of those. Obviously, we've already seen quite a few of them, the Contemptors and some of the Land Raiders and some other bits and bobs. So obviously, I'd want to get my hands on those as well and add them to the force. Um, now, I've actually managed to be one of the lucky people and get tickets for the next uh, Horus Heresy event, which is on the 19th and 20th of November at uh, Warhammer World. So I've now got an aim um, and uh, a target really to uh, to get everything ready for. So I've already got sort of you know quite a few units already painted up from the old force, which I'm planning to still use. But as I said, I really want to sort of change the uh, the way that the force is sort of comprised. So I used to run uh, a Pride of the Legion force, and there was a reason for that. Um, it was laziness basically. Uh, I, I didn't want to paint hundreds of uh, of tactical marines. Uh, so um, I opted for Pride of the Legion because with that you could take veterans or terminators as your sort of compulsory troop choices, which meant that rather than painting 20 models, I could paint 10 models and, and I'd have my troops and then just build around that. And that worked okay in the first edition because pretty much everything in the first edition had AP2, so you wanted to be running around with Terminators anyway. Uh, whereas there's been lots of changes, most things are, are sort of AP4, uh, and then obviously uh, with things like rending and breaching and stuff like that, that's how you actually penetrate um, the armour of Space Marines now. So it's not as, you know, kind of point at a squad of Marines and just delete them off the board, they do actually hang around a lot more. And, I think tactical marines are going to be the backbone of most um, forces, really. So uh, I wanted to, uh, to to get a couple of squads of uh, tactical marines in my new force. And I had these two squads of uh, Mark III marines uh, just on the, uh, on the sprues, as I said, in the pile of shame. So I thought, uh, let's get cracking with those. Now, what I wanted to do is, because I am planning on sort of painting quite a few extra things, I didn't want it to be a massive grind. So I have tried to come up with a way to paint these as, as quickly as I can, but still remaining with some of the uh, the quality. So I can still look at them and think, yeah, they, they look pretty cool. So, and I think I've, I've achieved that for the time that I put into these models. Um, it, it's actually the fastest that I've ever painted 20 Marines like this. So I'm actually really happy. I think for these two squads, um, the painting it actually took me probably uh, about 22 to 24 hours, something like that. So just over an hour, a miniature basically. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with that. How I achieved that is... Um, I used the lead belcher rattle can um, from Citadel uh, to give them sort of their, their undercoat. I uh, then washed them with null and oil. Uh, I then gave them a dry brush over with uh, iron hands uh, steel, which is a slightly lighter than the, uh, iron, uh, than the lead belcher. Uh, I then used just a black templars contrast and just sort of slapped that on. Um, wasn't wasn't too precious whether I got it on the trim or not because uh, it is quite translucent and it does actually act almost like a little bit of a, a, an extra shade so uh, there's a few corners that you can cut by by doing that and once you've done that 
that's that's basically it. The, you know, the, the, you've got all the colour down that you you need to. Now, obviously, with Space Marines, you're kind of used to edge highlighting and uh, uh, to to make those armor panels pop. Now, with the natural sort of um, trim of uh, the Mark III, uh, you haven't really got to do that much edge highlighting because that silver kind of um, does it for you. But I still wanted to put some interest into the model, so I've done sort of just some sponge chipping. Uh, on across them all um, and that's a very fast technique um, and uh, so that, that's what I did so I got to I think it was the storm host silver so actually the really bright silver um, and just sponge chip that all on uh, picked out some of the details like the red in the eyes and, and everything like that and the white bolter casings the white bolter casings are the thing that take you the uh, the most time because you've got to actually sort of layer up sort of two three coats of the uh, the sort of the white well I use um Eschen Grey, is it? No, Orthwan, Orthwan Grey, sorry, um, I use, uh, and then just highlight with uh, with a, a bright white, really. And, uh, yeah, this is the result. So I'll just pick up a few and, and, and show you what they look like. So we'll go with the uh, the Sergeant first of all. So this is a Sergeant using the, um, the Forge World upgrade kit on the body. So this will represent Artificer Armour uh, very nicely. Because uh, you always want to put artificer armor if you've got the points on your tactical marines, because you can make a tactical marine squad very, very tanky uh, if you get lucky rolling all of those twos. Um, he's got the Mark III Power Fist, uh, which again is a Forge World upgrade, um, and then the rest is just all sort of the, uh, the the plastics. So very, very quick scheme. You can see all around that. Uh, so really happy with um, with how he has turned out. I'll show you the Vexilia. Um, now, I'm probably not going to run him as a Vexilia um, very often, I don't think, because uh, obviously you have to pay the extra points. And, uh, you know, I don't really think I'm going to be using these units to get stuck in close combat for to get the benefit of the Vexilia. Um, but you never know. You never know. So, But it just gives a little bit of interest and uh, to, to one of the models. Uh, so that's him in that squad. Um, now... What I've done uh, to sort of uh, show, obviously, their tactical marines, you've got the uh, the standard sort of arrow that you get on tactical squads. But this one is the outline of the arrow, whereas the squad that you see behind, um, I have used the, uh, the solid arrow uh, transfer. And this is from the Iron Hands uh, transfer sheet, um, just using Microset and Microsol to apply them. So... They look like they're painted on. They're not. Um, they're not sticking up or wrinkled. Not like uh, the problems that Richard's been having. If you've seen his uh, his last video, he doesn't listen to my advice though, so it's his own fault. Uh, so yeah, but less said about that, the better probably. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll probably be helping him put some transfers on in the near future. I can see. Uh, so he's the first guy out of the second squad, just a basic troop, um, and then the sergeant. I'll just bring him up as well. Uh, so the sergeant, uh, I've used the, uh, it's actually the 40k um, head upgrade kit. Um, just wanted to, you know, make the sergeant stand out a little bit more. He's got the um, Forge World Artificer armor uh, upgrade kit. And then chainsaws are actually pretty good, this edition. Now, arguably, I probably should have put him with a bolt pistol to get the extra attack. But again, like I say, I don't plan to get them into uh, close combat. So it was kind of like more of a rule of call, really, giving him that the bolt gun and the chainsaw. I think he looks a bit badass uh, like that. So that's the um, the 20 uh, guys done. So that gives me a good backbone for any of the forces which I uh, you know want to put together. Um, so heading into this tournament... Um, I'm planning some armies. Now, it's always hard because um, Battlescribe isn't fully updated yet and there isn't anything from Games Workshop. Not that it'd be any good anyway, let's be honest. Um, now the Games Workshop one's not too bad for 40k, but uh, we all know Battlescribe is really good. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking um, Iron Hands, I want to go either Mechanised or Dreadnought Heavy. Now, obviously... Um, Dreadnought is 
I've got a lot of dreadnoughts already, so I'm probably going to go more towards the uh, the dreadnought list. Uh, but dreadnoughts are quite obnoxious in this edition at the moment, so I don't necessarily want to take just dreadnoughts and make all my opponents feel bad uh, when they're they're playing against me. So. Um, you know, in certain scenarios, I'm probably going to sort of reduce the amount of uh, Dreadnoughts. So, obviously, I've got to get up to 3,000 points um, for the tournament. But I want to aim for sort of maybe having about 4,000 points fully painted uh, so I can sw swap in and, and swap out. So, my first thought is to go for a... Um, I believe it's the March of the Ancients Rite of War, which allows you to take Dreadnoughts as um, compulsory cho troop choices. Um, but not to abuse that too much. So um, if you don't know, um, your compulsory HQ has to be a Dreadnought, which actually I really find interesting because that gives me lots of modelling opportunities. And that's what I really love about Horus Heresy, all the sort of different HQs and units that you can sort of kit bash and, and, and really make look your own. Um, so I could convert up a, um, a HQ Contempt to Dreadnought. Um, you can then take, as I said, Contempt of Talons as um, compulsory line, but I can still take these two squads to uh, to sort of bolster the ranks, probably throw them in Rhinos as well. So then I've got um, four sort of troop choices, so to speak, um, that are sort of scoring units. Um, the restriction to it, I believe, is you can only take one heavy support squad that isn't a dreadnought so i think dreadnought leviathan dreadnought and maybe derideo dreadnoughts are heavy support so you can take as many as those obviously within your force organization but you could only maybe take one squad of uh, of predators or something like that as a as a heavy support so that's sort of one of the uh, restrictions also you can't seize because you've got big stompy robots and uh, you're not going to sneak up on 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 anybody with that so i'm thinking about going down that route now the only thing that's sort of putting me off uh that that route is i really fancy putting together a squad of um morlocks which are the um sort of the the bodyguard to ferris manus so to speak uh now they're not modelled, uh, there's no rules for them, but they're all in the fluff. So if you're into your Iron Hands in 30k, you know, you know that that, that unit is, you know, it's, it's the unit that you want, really. So looking through the, um, the new sort of uh, Horus Heresy Codex is whatever they're called, Libras, I can't remember what it's called. Um, but looking through those, um, the closest that I can get for them rules-wise uh, would be to take the Cataphract Determinator HQ unit. Um, so I'm th thinking about sort of taking those. And why I say that they are sort of the closest is because they that unit is then weapon skill 5. So they're actually better at punching than just sort of standard Terminators. So that, for me, sort of links more into sort of the Morlocks. Plus, they've got the uh, the Banner Bearer. They can take some of the heavier weapons and things like that. So I'm thinking that um, that would make a, a, a good unit. Now, the issue that I have, uh, if I want to take that unit, is I can't take it in the March of the Ancients Rite of War because you have to take um, a sort of a Praetor or somebody else that's got like Master of the Legion that isn't a Dreadnought because they join him as a retinue, you see. So uh, in that case, what I might have to do is go down one of the other um, rights of war that I'm looking at. And there is a Iron Hand specific one, which name completely escapes me now. I think it's Gorgon Spite or something like that. Um, and that is the one where you can actually um, outflank with all of your tanks. So, and the restriction to that is I can only take one fast attack. I'm not taking any fast attack in this army ever anyway. So that's not really a restriction for me. Again, you can't seize, but, you know, if you've got big tanks and robots stomping up the, uh, the battlefield, yeah, you don't expect to be sneaking up on anybody. So the reason why I like that is the, uh, the outflanking with tanks, um, get a squad of uh, predators sneaking on from the side of the board can be quite quite good i would i would think i've not tried it yet but to me that sounds like that could be quite good 
and we have got a nice new Predator kit uh, that's been um, shown on Warhammer Community that's got some nice weapons. Uh, it also, that Rite of War, enables me to take a uh, support squad, um, a, a, a tactical support squad, with the um, Graviton Shredders, which are a um, Iron Hands specific weapon, uh, which is basically like a Graviton gun, but instead of being sort of a heavy weapon with the blast, it actually becomes Assault 2, uh, but it's still got the Haywire, so they could be really good anti-tank unit, um, sort of popping out of a Rhino that's come on from outflanking, and uh, Haywire into death as Spartan quite easy. Um, so that, that, that that's quite an appealing thought uh, for me as well. So kind of thinking one of those two rights of war but i'm uh i'm not too sure but anyway i've rambled on enough so this is the the first sort of uh in this series of videos um hopefully they'll be um sort of fairly frequent because as i said i'm going to be adding quite a lot to this force between now and november so if you've just picked this video up by chance and you're not subscribed to the channel uh subscribe to us it really helps us out and click that like button if you really want to see more videos like this and uh, thanks for watching guys and uh, I will see you in the next one.